was a one street town and it comprised of a drugstore and a grocery store. My father had a barber shop there. I started shining shoes at the age of nine in the barber shop and that was my money that I saved to go to college. <laughs> I only had enough money for about the first year of college. So I signed up then in the co-op at Georgia Tech and going out for the tennis team and was number one on the freshman tennis team. And this was in the middle of the recession. At the end of that semester, they couldn't get us a job. And then they said if I would switch to the regular school, they would get me enough jobs to get through school that way, which I was very happy to do. Forty-four, I was on a destroyer in the South Pacific. We were convoying ships, uh, transports and stuff. Bought a couple of books on paint manufacturing and one on the Harvard Business School cases that I took with me to study while I was uh, overseas. I was still single. And I decided I was going to go in the paint business when I got out of the service. I decided that San Francisco was the ideal area for us. Looked around then for someone to go in business with me to provide some of the expertise on paint manufacturing that I didn't have. And I finally decided Bill Kelly would be an ideal partner and he was agreeable to doing it. Well, we found this small a building in San Carlos, which had been a plaster factory, decided it was suitable and the rent was satisfactory to us. Believe it or not, it was $65 a month. Originally, we just sold out of the back door of the factory to the contractors. Kelly and I would make it in the morning and get it ready, and I would sell it in the afternoon and deliver it. Kelly would make paint out panels of our colors, and then we would chop them up into two by five rectangles and punch them and then at night we would stamp the name of the color on the back and make up color cards. That was our regular routine. We had to do a hundred before we could have dinner each night. And in our second year then we built a little store in front of the factory which was our first store and then we started uh, reaching out for retail business as well as contractor business. Well, hindsight, I had a lot more confidence than I probably deserved at that time, but when you're young, you don't think about failure. You just think about what you're, what you're trying to do. It was probably about four years when we then to move, put a store in San Jose, which was our first store outside of the factory store. At that time, I felt confident to go ahead and expand. And we were selling contractors in that area before we actually opened the store, so we had business. We just made it easier for them to buy. At that time, my grand plan was to have six stores in Northern California and retire, take it easy after I did that. Well, the six stores happened, but by that time, I guess I was still hungry, so I decided I'd keep on expanding. What I tried to do was be efficient in all areas, not just manufacturing, but in delivery by using our own trucks and by having our own stores at convenient locations for the contractor to pick up his paint. And to me, a complete operation is what really spells success. So we started opening our stores at 7 o'clock to give them convenience of getting their paint and their men out on the job for, in, prior to their work hours, which was 8 o'clock. Secondly, we found that they quite often would stop in the daytime and get coffee, so we started serving free coffee to them to get them back there during the day and early in the morning, which amazingly helped quite a bit. Tried to have a complete stock for them at all times because the average contractor buys as his job progresses and not ahead of time. We found that was very important to them to be able to come in with confidence and find that we had it available for them. My first major expansion was in 1961 when I bought a paint company in Dallas, Texas and expanded 
My idea there was to learn about the problems of long distance type operations, which is different from a local one. And uh, that worked out very well for us and gave us a, a courage to go ahead with further expansion. Well, from, from Texas, my next expansion was to uh, Southern California. We put a plant down in Ontario. From there, we went to Denver and bought a small company there and put in remodel their plant and then from Denver we went to Seattle so at that time I then had five factories and was operating in each of those areas. Execution is the most important thing really which means people. They have to uh, give the customer service and be attentive when he comes in and greet him and all these things that you think about it, but a lot of stores not only paint any other, they don't do that so much anymore. So we think that personal service is an important factor, particularly with a contractor and a retail person who are spending their own money. Uh, today, and it's more, get more and more difficult, is that you have to be an innovator in, and able to sell your products, which means not just the product, but it means recognizing the person's needs, which can be convenient to buy or it can be uh, small things like free coffee and these kind of things but that's the thing you've got to keep working at otherwise you get behind and somebody else is ahead and everybody's trying to do the same thing so it's a matter of how well you are able to anticipate changes in the consumer habits and that part has to be kept up with or you're suddenly you're passed by and you don't know what happened to you but you're not up to date I'm a very fortunate person to have been able to start this company at the time I did and get it to succeed as I have. I feel extremely fortunate. We've been able to prove what I wanted to do, which is have a company that will survive through the next 50 years as well as it has the first 50.